I'm going to talk about problems people have maintaining manifestations they would like to secure in place long term. Not sponsored, by the way, but the nuggets were so good today. Now, the only permanent thing is impermanence. However, most people are looking to lock their manifestations in place for a decent amount of time, unless, of course, what you're manifesting is a limited time experience, like a vacation or something. What's going down, usually, when you can manifest something temporarily, but it always ends up going away, and this could be a body change if you're looking for a long-term relationship, or you're looking to make some permanent, pretty radical change to yourself in some way. And this is even if you want to change the way that you're dressing or looking. It's not just, you know, weight-related. And I am going to use femininity as an example here because a lot of people are out here going, how do I become more feminine? How do I get into my feminine energy? And that's not really a thing, but I don't have any problem calling something feminine or masculine energy as long as we're all aware that energy really has no gender. So feminine energy. A lot of people will manifest this by making changes to their hair to their skincare, to their makeup, to their fashion. And depending on what your beauty standards are culturally, people will also mess with their weight. These are all surface level changes, material changes. And while material changes can encourage you to carry yourself differently, if you never actually alter your energy, realize something in yourself a cosmetic change is not going to do what you want it to do. And this is why people will tend to keep up with things and then fall off. You'll be able to manifest the partner in, but they take a look around and then they're out. Same thing with jobs. You can get a job, maybe you can't keep a job. It's because the looks are really only one element. And while you can certainly be doing things simultaneously, it's the energy that's really important. You can be absolutely gorgeous, beautiful clothes, beautiful hair, beautiful makeup, very, very fit, lean body, curves in all the right places, store-bought or natural. But if your attitude is consistently aggressive, if your language is largely uncouth, if your tone is harsh, if you're demanding and manipulative instead of gentle, it's not going to matter long term. That's the inner work. And I prefer to manifest from the inside out. Shift your energy. Then do. It's probably impossible to start a healthy cult, huh? Because while I am all about being your authentic self and having no problem with being alone and learning how to cultivate and produce your own energy in isolation, because when you understand how to do that, you're less likely to get into super imbalanced social dynamics with people and feeling like you need to be around people. So yeah, of course, I'm completely down with that. But there's really nothing like being in a group that is just vibing together. Nothing like it. It's a good time. Manifestations tend to come easier because that's the whole point of a coven or a mastermind group. When y'all are really all synced up together and being supportive and generally positive and all of that stuff, manifestation becomes so much faster and it's a lot more joyful doing it together. It's fun. But you know, with spirituality and people and all of that, when we start trying to apply structure, right? Long term, it just tends to go bad. And I mean, all things rise and fall. It's the nature of creation that destruction is an essential part of creation, death and decay is an essential part of life. So there's nothing unnatural about that, but I just feel like, especially with spirituality and things like that, operating in groups long-term just tends to go real bad. It's not that like people fall away from each other, it's just like the power dynamics get really weird and everything just can get really toxic really quickly. And that's unfortunate because if it didn't tend to go that way, oh, I'd be drawn up with a cult so quick. 
And I don't want to lead the cult either. I don't want to start my own because I already know that that's going to go bad, especially because I'm into alien stuff too. We're going weird real quick. No, I don't want to be the leader. I just want to be in the little group and just, you know, be a little clam. <laughs> Just happy and contributing my little contribution and playing my role. Leader, mm, that sounds like more responsibility and ill. I'm not leading, I'm vibing. But human nature being what it is, it's going to be especially hard within a group staying out of those very, very weird dominance and superiority games, which is likely why. And when I say that this movie is going to literally change the universe- Okay, no, but for real, let's talk about it for a second. And this one's going to be one of my more unhinged ones, but I just don't care. When I saw the extended trailer for the Barbie movie pop up during one of my YouTube ad breaks, I watched the whole thing. And I knew I was probably going to be into it anyway, but I hadn't really consumed much about the movie, and so I was very invested in it. And from what I was initially seeing, I was like, oh, I really hope that this is going to have Josie and the Pussycats vibes. Because when that movie came out, I went and saw it and I thought it was the best thing ever. And I was trying to convince all of my guy friends at the time to come and see it because they would love it. And they were resistant to it at first because, you know, Josie and the Pussycats, right? But I peer pressured them into going to see it and it turned out to be a favorite of theirs for a very long time. And it still is really funny. And the soundtrack's really good. But what I thought about the Barbie movie trailer after watching it to completion was, oh, this movie's about manifestation. Oh, this movie is about changing reality. This movie is about the intersection of dimensions. And it's about altering destiny. So I'm very excited to see what they do. Especially since we're kind of talking about a realm that's very high vibe and someone or a couple of someone's from that realm coming into the real world and having to function there. I really think that besides being super funny, this movie could actually do and say a lot and I'm not joking. And another thing I am not joking about is that you could potentially experience a reality shift going to see that movie. If you want to potentially hop through a portal, go see the Barbie movie. And I am absolutely not joking. Art, no matter what sort of art, has the potential to be deeply transformative. One of the last times that that happened on a mass cultural scale was when the first Matrix movie came out. Now, that was a different time, and I don't know that the Barbie movie is going to have quite the same impact for so many people, but I'm definitely excited about it. And if you were having second thoughts about going, I would say go, just from a manifestation perspective, just for a timeline hopping perspective and a dimensional shifting perspective. And anyway, even if it's just a fun colorful movie with fun fashion and Margot Robbie, I'm still probably really gonna like it, regardless of whether my DNA remains intact. This is about energy reading and tarot, but any type of like divination method, even just channeling or whatever. Reading energy affects manifestation. There's nothing wrong with checking in on the energy every once in a while to make sure you're on course, the frequencies are where you want them to be, and the manifestations are in fact lining up. And a very easy and free way to do that is to just get yourself right onto Play Button app. Go navigate to a few pick a card readings that are dealing with the same theme of your manifestation. Pick a card in each of those readings and see what the trends are. And try not to get too hung up on specifics. There is absolutely no reason for you to be constantly checking up on the energy, constantly checking in with tarot, because doing that is actually doing something to your manifestation, what you're looking to create. And usually it's adding too much energy. Even you just doing that is kind of like you're watering the plant. You're overwatering the plant. Plant can't grow and is not gonna grow with you staring at it and just adding more fertilizers, fertilizer and water every two seconds, right? You will kill the plant that way. Same thing with checking on the energy. Looking at it affects it. But so why now, within divination, tower reading, whatever, why will some things manifest when others don't? 
It's because the energy reading is just a check of the energy in the moment. Now between here and there, depending on what you do, the energy is going to change. So if you hear a reader saying something like, oh, I see a new job here, some type of new opportunity, you might get excited because you are in fact looking for a new job. And the mistake is believing that because you had a synchronicity within that read, that you are going to be successful at whatever job that you've applied to, that you're going to get it. Not necessarily. If you have in your mind and in your energy, me at a new job, that's just going to show up in the energetic feedback. And the quickest way for that to come in is through a reader on the internet. It's just giving you a snapshot of your current energy. So if you are constantly changing your mind or giving inconsistent energetic output into getting a new job, you are not going to see that really manifest in your reality. You might still be getting sometimes feedback of it in readings and things like that, but it's not automatically gonna manifest. In general, the longer something remains in your energy and in your mind, the more likely you are to manifest that thing somewhere on the spectrum. But just remember, someone can always be thinking about doing something, but never do it. But it'll still show up in the energy check. I don't know why I hate them, but eventually I start hating like all terms that we get involved with in the manifestation community. And it's just, I know some part of me just needs to get over it, but like I've been over the word abundance for a while, even though sometimes that's the exact right word to use. And the one that's irritating me right now is all of the self-concept talk. And I don't know why the word self-concept just like grates on me, but I think for me, it just is kind of reminiscent of like therapy talk. So it's sort of like a lot of people with no background in therapy, psychology, neuroscience, nothing are kind of all adopting the language of somebody who does have that background. And look, if it is the appropriate language, go ahead and use it. It just irritates me when I start hearing it a lot. But so let's talk about self-concept and curating your thoughts. And yes, the stories we tell ourselves. The thing that irritates me about the way a lot of people talk about stories or self-concept or personal beliefs is that they're talking about it like a lot of very black and white, like weight loss coaches talk about things. Like, bro, all you need is a calorie deficit. Just shut the fuck up and stop eating. Which while that's not untrue, it's also not necessarily helpful, depending on who you are. There are significant factors uh, influencing why someone might not be able to maintain a calorie deficit long term. And without ever exploring those things, just telling someone to stop eating isn't going to help that person, and it also might lead to a lot of other unhealthy behaviors. And it can be the same within manifestation. You'll hear a lot of kind of law of attraction based people say stuff like, just drop the story, just stop. It's all just beliefs, it's all just thoughts, just stop. It's like everyone all of a sudden turns into HRH collection. And the thing is, they're not exactly wrong, but it's also not necessarily helpful to someone. Because usually the reason why someone's having a lot of difficulty changing a belief about themselves or a story that they tend to experience in reality over and over again, it's because those beliefs were deeply ingrained over decades, usually with very, very negative, repetitive reinforcement from a lot of different sources as well. That'll be from family, that'll be from your social circle at school, it'll also be from media. When you have a thought with decades of momentum built up behind it, it's going to be very challenging for you to just drop that. And here's the thing, some people will just be able to drop it. Those are outliers. Usually you're gonna need time, support, potentially long-term therapy. So if you're finding this challenging, that's normal. If you apologize genuinely to someone, they are not obligated to accept. That video started with the bold glamour filter on and so when my face popped up, I was like, what happened to me? I look like a weird little monster with that filter, but other people look really good with it. Anyway, the point. Her video is super spot on about apologies. 
And I'm interested in this from a manifestation and energy perspective because when we have done something wrong to someone, unless you're a very specific type of person, that energy is going to be very painful for you to hold. It's like having a knot or a twist in something long term. And sometimes this is going on because like we learn these toxic behaviors growing up in our formative years and we don't even realize how much pain we're in until much later in life when we start working things out. So of course, once we realize and want to apologize for what we've done, um, situations like this can happen. So whenever I'm thinking about making an apology to someone, I tend to think about how long it's been and what the nature of the wrong was because you coming back into that person's life after causing them some degree of fairly serious emotional harm can actually do them more damage than you just staying away and shutting the hell up. And it's always why I suggest to people to understand your reasons why you are choosing to apologize. Is it actually because you want to apologize to this person or is it because you are looking to give yourself relief? There's a difference. Now, I'm a theist, so whenever I am in a situation where I think I owe someone an apology and they are not in my life, what I do is I ask God, God, if you work the circumstances out where this person and I cross paths again, I will apologize to them. And when I've used that particular prayer, the people who tend to come back into my range are the people that it is okay for us to have this sort of energetic exchange. Lucky for everyone, you don't need to apologize directly to someone to work out your own energy. If you are a theist, God, spirit, your guides, whoever you work with, you can be fully accountable to them and they will know. And you can forgive yourself or have forgiveness granted to you that way. Or if you're not a theist, just forgive yourself. You did not know any better. That's not an excuse for causing harm, but as long as you are being fully accountable with yourself, you can forgive yourself. You don't necessarily need that from another person. Ask yourself, is it really worth disturbing potentially someone's peace? Do you stick to your meal plan when you're ovulating, PMSing? I'm sorry I look so rough, but today is actually my most aggressive day of this. And last night, I really did not get very much sleep because I was so uncomfortable. So I can give some tips with the food and cravings issue, but not so much with the scale because I really don't have a scale in here. I just work out because I like it. And I know when I'm eating a particular way that I just tend to feel a lot better. So all you said was meal plan. And yeah, like when I am thinking back to maybe three or four months ago, and even throughout the entirety of my life going through this cycle, there are particular days either leading up to or during Shark Week that I just have like really aggressive cravings for a particular food. I would say though, if you aren't doing any type of regular cardio as a part of your fitness or health journey, I would say you think about adding that in. And it doesn't have to be aggressive, I just mean like regular walking. For some reason, when I am doing very regular cardio, I experience the craving stuff way less. Like I haven't had any this month at all. And when I'm doing cardio regularly, I tend not to, and I'm not really sure why. However, if you don't want to, or if you try it out and you find out that you still have cravings, I would say indulge whatever it is that it's for, but try and do like a modified version of the craving, right? So if you want something super sweet, like make a coffee at home and then maybe do like a fun flavored, like either zero sugar or completely zero calorie syrup or creamer. That's really fun. And if it's something savory and crunchy, like the flavored popcorns for me, like I am like a cheese and crackers kind of girl. So when I have that particular craving, I do like the white cheddar popcorn. And my favorite brand is the Skinny Pop, but even though I hate that name, but I've always liked it just because the ratio of flavoring to popcorn is really good for me. Smart Food also has a white cheddar 
pop, but I found it's like they take a fire hose of flavoring to the popcorn and I don't really like it. But if you know you like more of the cheddar flavor, if you even like that, go with the Smart Food brand and not Skinny Pop. And then some people say you should just go ahead and have a reduced portion of whatever it is that you are super craving. But I know for me, if I have Cheez-Its or chips in this house, it's gonna be the whole box or the whole bag. It's just, that's what, that is what is happening regardless if it is Shark Week, pre-Shark Week or not. So that one's not for me. Hey, stop talking about what you don't wanna experience. To the best of your ability, stop complaining about your situation. The second you notice yourself complaining mentally, and especially if you verbalize a complaint, you need to get into your gratitude journal and write down at least seven things that you're grateful for in this moment. With the current social circle that I'm in, if there is a problem going on with something that we are experiencing or something going on within the group, we allow ourselves to talk about it one, maybe two times, but within those conversations, we are also creating solutions for those issues. And then once we start implementing the solutions, there is no more complaining. If you are a chronic complainer, you are at least some form of energy vampire. And I'm not talking about once in a while, y'all. I'm talking about chronic consistent. If you've always got something critical to say, if nothing is ever good enough for you, there's something that you need to address within yourself. If you are saying something like, God, I really just can't spend any more money. I really don't want to spend any more money. Oh gosh, like I can't do this because I'm going to go broke. I don't want to go broke. You are saying that because you are aware you are going broke. You are saying that because you are aware that you are going to spend more money, even though you know that spending more money is actually detrimental to your situation. There's nothing wrong with recognizing and accepting your current reality, but making a declarative statement or realizing a current truth about yourself or about your circumstance is in no way the same thing as complaining or verbalizing catastrophizing thoughts and driving yourself further down the spiral. The realization and acceptance of the truth is what typically halts you on that little downward spiral. And once you've actually done that, the more likely that you are to change what you're doing. So instead of verbalizing something like, oh my God, I'm gonna go broke if I keep doing this, just say, I am spending more money than is in my current means. That is not my preference. Short term, it may feel good, but long term, it makes me feel not good and leads to other things that are not within my preference. I prefer feeling secure with what I have now. I prefer feeling whole with what I have now. I can limit my spending to only necessities for the next several months. I can place things that I want on a wish list. They'll be there waiting for me six months from now. Anything that's not, I don't need anyway. Anticipating that reality is fun.